this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I photographed and composited this final image of Jason from this shoot. So we're going to freeze the frame right here and first start off by highlighting some of the gear that I used for this shoot. First off, we have the main light. This is the 27-inch beauty dish from Ellen Chrome. Now this light is great because it has a lot of specular highlights because of the reflective material and I also have a 25 degree grid placed over it to keep the, low, the light focused and very pointed in one specific direction on him. That light is powered by the Ranger RX Speed and the head that the beauty dish is inside is the Ranger Standard Head. I also have a Matthews 24 by 30 black flag, and you can actually see it here in this freeze frame just next to me on the stand. To meter the light, I'm using the Sekonic L358 light meter, so I know exactly what brightness I'm getting from my flashes. And this is a great meter. I've been using it for years. You'll also notice I'm metering a light behind me. That is the Style RX 600 mono light. And on that light, I have a 7-inch reflector with a 20-degree grid. What that does is it allows the light that comes out of that to be very focused. You'll also notice as you look back at it, it's got an orange filter on it. That's a half CTO gel with Velcro holding it on. And if you keep your images in color, it has a nice warming effect that really warms up the texture of the image. Here you notice I'm just metering up the lights. I'm going to get to the settings coming up and tell you exactly how I shot it. But you notice some of the angles. We have the main beauty dish is very hard, 45 degrees to one side, with the, and very high, so we get a very dramatic lighting effect. And then we're kind of mirrored at, on that one background light, and just those two lights are being used. The one you see just to the, the right of the subject, and then the one that I just covered up with the flag. The background is a neutral gray seamless background that costs about $39 on two stands just hanging about four or five feet away from our subject. We're also pre-lighting the shot so we're ready when the talent finally gets there. You recording? <laughs> we're in business people. This is real straight on for this one. So here we have finally brought Jason in, who's our uh, model for the day. He's an actor here in Nashville. And we're setting up the lighting for him, because every single person, the light's going to hit them slightly differently. Their eyes may be a little deeper set or less, and we're making minor adjustments to the camera. I'm taking a few quick test shots really fast, and just seeing what the lighting is doing. You may also notice this reflector that we brought in, which is just a white reflector. We pulled that in just to add the tiniest kiss of light to his right eye. The camera that I'm using for this particular setup is the Canon 5D Mark III with the Canon 85L 1.2 lens on it. That's my go-to lens for all portrait stuff, and I'll shoot almost everything I can on that lens if it's possible for portrait work of this type. You can see how specular and contrasty that beauty dish is and what kind of light quality it puts out. It's really beautiful, but very specular and very contrasty looking. That's cool. Which is exactly the type of lighting that we wanted for this shot, a very aggressive look. My settings were ISO 100, 1 25th of a second at shutter speed, and the beauty dish was powered up until it ran f5.6 on the light meter, and that's what I shot it at. The background light was two stops under the main light to f2.8, so it looked very, very subtle. What you notice us doing here right now is we're actually photographing a plate of just him bl blowing out some smoke for us so that I could use that image as a composite later. It was difficult to focus as well, so I actually had him hold his hand out in front of my camera so I could focus on it, as you can see there. Then he, I would pre-focus, he would blow out some smoke, and then we would take the image. And there's the photograph of just the smoke. Now that we have both images, we're ready to do the composite. So stay tuned next week when I teach you guys how I took the original raw image, which you see here, and converted it to this. Can't wait to share it with you, so come on back next week.